If you want to see the configuration that I have for radar and sonar for container station on the QNAP, then watch this video. Hey, Gary Cruz with GaryCruz.com here. This is an updated video from my video last month where I upgraded radar and sonar to be used on Docker in Container Station. The biggest difference that you'll see in this video is how I set up my paths and permissions. So hopefully that'll help you out. If you have any other questions, be sure to check out my old video. So I'm not going to go over some of the basics that I went over last time. You have to have Container, container Station installed. And let's just take a look at my two dockers here. I've got one for radar and I have one for sonar. Going into radar, one big difference from the last video is that I switched to using the same port number so that my bookmarks will continue to work as previous. So if we go into the settings here and scroll down to advanced settings, and uh, one thing that you'll notice here is that I have PGID and PUID set and time zone. Now, I'll put this in a link, but check out this wiki that is for the best Docker setup for both radar and sonar, and also LiDAR, but I don't use that. So if you scroll to the top here, you'll see a, a Docker guide. And one of the things that helped me out here is when I scroll down and took a look at the consistent and well-planned paths, this is basically how I set my paths up. So you got movies, music, books, TV, and then you have a path for a um, for the data itself. So you can see things for your torrents, for your Usenet, and media ser server. But I also set up a separate share for my configs, and I'll show you that too. All right, so. Take a look at this, this is very useful. I'll try to cover some of this and re reference this as I go back and forth. So the reason why I'm making this video now is because if you take a look at my Sonar app and go to status, and you'll see that there's a new update available. And if we go over here to try to update this, I'm unable to update Sonar directly. I have to update the Docker container to receive the update, which is fine, it's pretty easy to do. And take a look at the disk space here. I've got a slash, slash config, and slash data. Let's just focus on sonar for now. Radar is going to be very similar. Well, since I'm doing a high level overview, I'll just quickly show this as you may still be watching this to see if this is relevant for you. And one thing that you'll notice different here is uh, not only do I have the slash, slash data, slash config, but also the slash share, slash uh, cache dev two underscore data slash data slash Usenet. And the reason why I have that is because I have uh, multiple shares on my QNAP. And the way that looks is if I go to my share setup. So let's do that under control panel and shared folders. And you'll see that I have one here called data. And that data contains all my movies and TV shows, etc. And I've created that as a separate share. I'll put that path in the description if you need to copy and paste that, but you'll have to figure that out on your own. All right, so, so the first thing I'll do is since I want to update Sonar, since Sonar has a new update available, the thing I want to do is stop the container for Sonar and reinstall it. Go back to the overview. I'm going to start with Sonar. And what I want to do is copy the settings that I'm going to use to rebuild this. I'll put this in the description. So I've got the port number. And this is going to be the IP address of your QNAP server, of course. And if we go over to settings and scroll down to advanced settings, we'll take a look at my environment here. We'll see that my PGID equals 1001, my PUID equals 1001. So the user ID and this other ID, I found that helped with when I when I was doing these setups with the copy the path problems. I was getting some copy path errors. Uh, it looks like I didn't add a time zone in here, but I'll do that when I reset this up. 
on a network. I've got port 8989, I've got port 8989 on a device and no data under shared folders. So I set up a path called shared data config sonar. So let's see if I have that on here. Let's go to Plex and then we got data and we've got this config and you'll see that I've got two folders created here, radar and sonar. And I've got my media, I've got concerts, movies, TVs. This is something I've added and then the same here under Usenet. But what's nice is that it'll just reference this data as we talked about in this Docker guide right here, data. So copy this and it has more detail about that. All right, let's close this out. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy these just so that it's also in the description that you can copy and paste if you need to. And I'm just doing this for reference and your path might be different depending on the share setup that you have. So let's uh, move this over here and data. And we'll do the same thing. So I'll cancel that and let us see if there's anything else that I need to copy over. Uh, if you're not familiar with Docker, this is just the application that is running. Um, and Docker, think of it as a separate uh, emulated machine that can run this software. Uh, you can do your own homework on how Docker works, but that at a high level is what it is. So it's safe to remove. Okay, from here, let's go ahead and remove Sonar. And we'll go to Create. And we're gonna look for Sonar, S-O-N-A-R-R. -R. And we want the latest version. So let's click on Install. And I don't know why it puts minus one, but I like it to be without the minus one. And then let's go down here and click on event settings. And I'll add a couple of environmental variables that I copied earlier. So the first one that I want is this PG ID. And you might want to read the Docker guide for the containers. Um, they've got a good section under ownership and permissions. I found that 1001 was working for me. Can't remember where I saw that, but once I found out it worked, I didn't really dig into it further because I was getting permissions issues. And once I set it to this on both my radar and sonar, it worked and I was happy with that. So let's just do this, All right? And then let's add the time zone. That wasn't in my radar, I mean sonar, but it was in my radar. So I'm just gonna add it here on a network. I'm gonna, before my old video, I left it at random and I had to wait to it booted every time. So now I can just have a bookmark and use the same bookmark for it every time with that port. And that's fine. For data, we'll leave that the same under shared folders. We're gonna remove this config because now we're not creating a new volume. We're gonna to point to an existing volume. So let's add that. And the host will be what I showed earlier. So I got data, I got a separate folder called config, and I just made one called sonar. So that's where all your backups and everything will go. And your mount point here will be config. I also want to add another one. Oops. What's going on here? Add. Or maybe I start. There we go. So the other one is my data. And I also want data here, data. And this will be slash data. Uh, let's look at what I had before. Okay, slash config slash data. And let's click on create. Can review the settings here. Looks like I'm missing a, let's, let's go back and fix that one path. Let's add one more path, which is just where was that path going to? That's all I had before. Hmm. Let me double check radar or you got slash. 
Oh, that's the root. Okay. Let me just do that, and then we'll say that right there. Can we do that? No. All right. Don't worry about that. Just leave that as a learning point. So let's go ahead and create. Scroll down through here. Now, I should be grabbing this from the main branch, but we'll see. You'll see that this host and container is 89.89 or 8989. And these are my paths. So click on OK. If we go to the overview and click on Sonar. See, I have that bookmark. So now the paths are the same or the uh, port numbers are the same. Let's jump right in. All right. Oh, here's the weird thing. It still says update is available. Apparently this Docker hasn't been updated. All right. So, well, let me just check if this works. So let's go and uh, grab something here. And let's just do a search. Let it grab this real quick. It was a success. And let's just double check this to see if it grabbed it. We got the activity here. Okay. Okay, it worked. All right, so let's do the same thing with radar, just so you guys can see it. Uh, for some reason, my indexers aren't showing, but that's okay. So the key thing is making sure you follow your paths. Oh, here's another useful page, which is for radar. Let me put that in my notes here so I can put it in the description. So radar, we've got both the Docker guide and the radar guide. And this is where it said the PU, PUID equals 1,000 and PGID equals 1,000. I must have fat fingered and put in <laughs> 1,001. And uh, here are the different paths that we talked about earlier. All right, so if we go to radar, and for some reason I had this here as well. But the key thing that you wanna double check is your NZB settings. So let's actually go to that. So app center, and I've got NZB get, which is fine. And let's go to settings. And here's where it's important for you, so paths. And this is where um, it, it's also changed in my previous video. So you can see that I have this share cache dev two and data usenet. And just for a reminder, if we take a look at this path here, I've got a share called or a volume called Plex, and then I have data, and then I have a folder called usenet. And these are the ones I created was TV and movies. Everything else was created automatically when I set that up. So you point to this path and I'll copy that just to make sure that you have that as an example. Your volume may be different, so double check that. And then from there, you can always reference it as dollar sign main dir slash, because this is now main dir. Uh, so if you, this is the pointer, right? So anything with this will equal that. So this intermediate files will be under main dir intermediate. Same thing with NZB, same with the Q, same with temp. And so when you make this change, all this propagates down to anything that's referenced below it. So just uh, look quickly again. So you've got temp, Q, NZB, intermediate. Um, and that is all under here. And then you got apter, where the application is. And I didn't change that. I just changed this one. So that's the key thing too, is if you have some permissions issues or some issues finding files, make sure you've got it pointed in the same directory structure that was outlined in this Docker guide right here. So if you keep it simple like this, don't put any spaces, all that should all work out. And this is also in the description. 
So that's the update for this video. Hopefully this helps for any confusion around my first video because I was first trying it out. But after reinstalling it, installing it multiple times, I made some corrections to the paths and I made some corrections with the ports and also some simplification of an understanding of how this reference directory works in NZBGET. If you found this video useful, definitely hit like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and thanks for watching.